Um, a very good friend of mine, Steve Reynolds, uh, he's here and um, we're going to learn about who he is and what he's done and, uh, and he's, if you haven't guessed, he's a filmmaker and uh, he started off at uh, Tyrell College just um, next door actually. <laughs> This is like a conference. This is it. This is it. You're the main man. Um, uh, Joshua mentioned a film called Lockdown. Um, yeah, yeah. I finished uh, Lockdown in um, October. That was for WWE Studios. Um, and yeah, going back out there to do another one for them soon. Cool. So WWE Studios. Uh, can anyone think about what kind of studio that is? What? Wrestling. Wrestling. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Any wrestling fans in here? All of you. All. Oh. Yeah. All right. I've got good. I'm not. I'm not too afraid with wrestling. So Steve's going to tell me who was in the film. Uh, we, had, we had a character called uh, Dean Ambrose. Yes. Um, yeah, he used to be part of the Shield. And um, yeah, I, I I know that because I researched it. I didn't know what the Shield was or anything. I used to watch WWE when it was WWF. I did as well. Yeah, and then obviously it changed. Yeah. You know, they just changed the name. Good news. Take a seat. Yeah, it was interesting. It was, it was interesting. Good guy. The seats around here. Come on. He's not as crazy as he is in the in the course <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, he's he's pretty he's pretty chill actually, very laid back. I was really surprised like when uh, because Steve's really open Steve's brilliant in with social media and Facebook. He was posting these pictures online and uh, I'd have to Google the names uh, and I found out that Dean Ambrose was a wrestler through his pictures. But also his physique, I mean, does he, he didn't look so wrestler type. He, yeah, he, he, he's quite... got a very natural uh, muscular physique. He's big, like it, he doesn't look big compared to someone like John Cena. John Cena's enormous and he's got hands, as Dean said, that could, you know, crush. I can't remember how he described it. He described it very well, his enormous hands. The Deans are very, you know, I stand next to him, he looks huge compared to me. And yeah. um, so, yeah, he's, he's a big fella, but it's, it's not, it's not, you know, over, yeah. over, overly huge. You know, so we've yeah, we've got some questions. Yeah, around, around, I'll right? just go for some questions. Right, 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 right. Always, I'm just going to say, yeah. he's, he's, he's not just that guy, it's Triple H who's huge as well. Oh, they're all huge, yeah, yeah. funny, I was just doing you. Most of them are huge. Yeah. 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 My, friend, my friend was in uh, London Airport, yeah. and he saw... Um, the big show. Yeah, big he, show. he towered over every single person he's talking. Yeah, WWE have got a film coming out. Um, it will probably be just before lockdown because they were just shooting that. Um, called Vendetta, funnily enough. Yeah. yeah. Confusingly yeah. enough, um, but yeah. no, that's their Vendetta. I've got my Vendetta. But Big Show was the the guy in that. They had uh, and the same crew worked with him, and they said, you know, he's like a, he's like a big gentle giant in real life. Really nice guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, what's the ring actually, what's it actually made of? I, I don't know, I'm not an expert in the actual WWE yet. Um, maybe when I get some tickets there I can kind of research that and get you an answer for it, but at the moment, I don't know. Has he given you like some tickets then to the shows and stuff? Do you know I saw what? some shows coming up. Yeah, I had, I had tickets for the British one, I actually had VIP tickets for the British one in Manchester. And I was going to hang out with Dean afterwards, but they changed his show last minute and then... Um, yeah, me and, me and the wife didn't go in the end. It would have been great, so maybe next time. Yeah, that would have been good. Well, we've, got some, we've got lots of questions already. This is good. All right, go for it. What has been your highlight shooting um, lockdown? Oh, that's a good great question. question. It's a great question. Um, you a question about yeah, yeah, you can ask a question about anything. I don't care. Um, lockdown, I probably had quite a lot. Uh, one of them was the fact that we had the use of a massive building that looked like Cyberdyne, and they just let me shoot the... I can't swear. Shoot, <laughs> shoot the crap, crap out of it, yeah. Um, I also got to drive Bumblebee, the yellow Camaro from uh, Transformers. Um, there were lots of lots of um, lovely, lovely things that, that, that went with uh, shooting lockdown, um, but they were kind of the ones that, that jumped out at me. And, and, and working on that side of the, of the pond, on that side of the Atlantic with a great crew that was, uh, you know, from, from Vancouver, full of, you know, professionals. It was great, it was great. We're going to take a question from Sam over there. Yeah. Hi. Um, no. I've never really had the pleasure of meeting anybody who's been connected to wrestling at all whatsoever. Sure. And there's a question that thousands of people on the planet are dying to know. Okay. Is it fake? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, it looks very real to me. Um, it looks very real to me. I've never actually asked that question myself and I don't watch it enough to... Uh, make, make that assessment. So, um, as, as, as far as I know, you know, if someone's getting hit across the head 
with a chair. I know if Dean's going to hit someone across the head with a chair, he hits them across the head with a chair. Did he show you any so, like, moves and stuff? Did he show you like some combat moves? Or... <laughs> no, I was going to train with him one day, just weights and fitness and stuff like that. But our schedules were so hectic between the two of us that um, we just didn't manage to get 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 into it. But he's such a hard worker. It's uh, if he applies himself half as much as he does when he's on set to how he trains and. Then uh, it's uh, yeah he's a he's he's a he's a hard working guy yeah we didn't get yeah. a chance to do that. Um, it, it depends on where the production warrants really yeah at the moment they had me in Vancouver and then I went to LA to finish it we edited it in LA yeah LA is a great town it's funny I always wanted to get there for like 15 years and then it, it, in the next 12 months I would have been and been there and back four times. Which is which is kind of it's all come about nice and nice and quick, but it depends where the production is going to where the film is going to be set. You know, if the film's going to be set in Mexico, then you go to Mexico. If the film's going to be set in Alaska, I guess you go to Alaska. Yeah. Are you, you know. all different movies, or is it mostly My kind of niche is kind of action stuff, and I, I've kind of came in with the WWE studios guys. It's not I'm not specifically just going to make movies with wrestlers, but. Um, Oh, there he is, yeah. Another one. Great, Scott, yeah. Scotty, Scotty, big wrestling fan. Dean, Dean Ambrose, um, Stephen has worked with. Oh! Hold me down and call me Shield. <laughs> <laughs> down now. I didn't know, I didn't realise you're going to have so, so many wrestling fans in here. So he, take this place to the Yeah. Does he? Oh, okay. That's cool, yeah. <laughs> Not as tall. Let's the big show. We'll be undertaking that. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, we got a question at the back there. We've got Great question. I don't, I don't have to be here. You guys have been Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. No, do sit there because it makes me feel like, yeah, not so lonely up here. No, um, how did I get to the position uh, hard work? I, 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 just, I just kept working very, very hard. I started off actually at Tide Hill College, when it was Tide Hill College, about whoa, 17 years ago maybe, uh, 16 years ago, uh, 18 years ago. That number keeps going up. Um, so, uh, yeah, I started there uh, making little, you know, sort of short films and stuff like that, and then just kept making films and um, networking and trying to get producers to look at the screenplays that I'd written. I'd written a lot of very big feature screenplays after my short films, and then contacted a lot of producers. Um, and then while I was doing that, I just kept making my own movies and just never never stop. The key is to just keep going and moving onward to the next project after the next, after the next, and then eventually it will grow and something will break through. <coughs> That's a brilliant question. Scott, great question. question. Sorry, so I've got to Hi, be, cameraman. Uh, yeah. um, how does it feel from uh, doing short films and being quite unknown to where you are right now? Like, how does it feel? What's the transition like? Um, uh, that's the interesting question. You can kind of pick and choose projects a little bit more. I suppose that's one thing. I know after Vendetta, I got offered a few projects and they, they didn't feel right for me. And, um, you know, I felt like I'd done what I needed to do with Vendetta. I was really proud of Vendetta. Um, and then I got about three projects come my way that if I hadn't done Vendetta, I probably would have done those. And I'm glad I didn't do those because then that led on to lockdown um, and that's kind of more about where I want to be. But in terms of that, you get a little bit of money as well, more money as well, which is quite nice um, from when you're unknown. Yeah, not that much yet, but just a little bit more so you're comfortable. But yeah, being able to choose the projects that you get excited about as opposed to the ones that you feel like you have to do to prove yourself, that's, that's kind of nice, it's a luxury. Okay, I'm just going to rewind a little bit because for those of you who don't know, uh, Stephen made a film in the UK called Vendetta, which you can buy on DVD. Uh, it stars a guy called Danny Dyer. Has anyone heard of Danny Dyer? Okay, so Google it, check it out, look at the trailer. Steve made that film, but he started off making short films around Coventry, Warwickshire, uh, around the area, and then got to make Vendetta, which then led him to filming in LA, okay, just to fill you in for those of you who don't know, don't know. what you talk, what, what, Vendetta, what's that? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Right, yeah, it's a film, it's a, it's a very violent film, a very good film. Alex has been holding his hand, I know, seven, no, you can, you've got lots of questions in, you're very passionate, we were going to get around uh, a lot of questions for people who haven't. Yeah, okay. Alex, go for it. Um, when did it actually hit you that you'd actually made the, like, a big jump from short films to what you're doing now, feature films, because 
you, you know you know that you've made the jump, but when did it actually feel like you, you actually had it, it, Yeah, it is a very good question. It felt, even after Vendetta, I didn't feel like I'd made that much of a jump. Mainly, I don't know why. Um, it was great to be working on that movie. Um, and it was amazing to work with Danny and there was a jump when I was doing that and that felt great um, but I think the big jump was then when I got offered to do the, the lockdown movie over in um, over in, in the States so that, that was then yeah. what made it the, it felt, suddenly felt huge then yeah right. that's, that's a good question I just want him I just want Steve to talk about the journey from getting the call uh, about lockdown because you make a good feature film in the British or in, in, in the UK, and you think, right, okay, I made this film, and the, uh, the the telephone should be ringing off the hook saying, where's my next film? But did that happen to Steve? Uh, do you want to take it on from there, like the connection after Vendetta? And yeah, I, like, I'd made Vendetta, and as I said, I'd kind of been offered three three movies, but it was it was with the producer that produced Vendetta. And we had, you know, we've got a really good relationship, and so I wasn't being hired by anyone else, it was still the same guy that had produced Vendetta, and, but the, 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 the movies, you know, I didn't want to do those movies, but, you know, we still got a great relationship, so I went to look elsewhere for other producers and things like that, and to see if I could get some of the scripts that I, because I've got my own scripts that I've written, to see if I could get those going. Um, and it just, it just wasn't happening, you know, n nobody was picking up the phone, nobody was answering um, my calls or anything, so um, I basically thought, why don't I, I'm just going to get on a plane, I'm going to go to LA. Um, um, because nothing was happening last year and, and that's what I did I had a little bit of money left and I just got on a plane went to LA had a few meetings set up over there nothing really amazing it was a very um, you know very daring kind of um, escape to get over there but WWE took a 20 minute meeting with me they had seen Vendetta they liked what I'd done I shot it for 100, 100 between 100 and 150 grand it looked like you know 5 million and um, they really wanted me to, to, to get started on one of their, their projects because they had more money to spend on that movie and they could see that I could make things look expensive for not a lot of money. And that's kind of what they, you know, what they were doing up there in Vancouver. So I was there, you know, 20 minutes for that meeting, went over to LA for 10 days, um, came home. And then 10 days later, I had a phone call from, from WWE and said, um, you know, we've got this project for you. I didn't write Lockdown. I usually, it was the first project that I directed that I didn't write. Um, so that was a very strange process for me, especially on that scale. It's my biggest movie, but I hadn't written the script. So you go through a different process. And then within about a month, I was back out doing uh, lockdown in uh, Vancouver, it was crazy. Just to add, there was, there was a post on Facebook, you can tell me about uh, what happened here. You're reading the script, you're, on lo you're doing a recce of the location in Vancouver and they're saying, oh, and you say, oh, is this where the helicopter comes in around the corner or something? And they look at the script and say, there's no helicopter in the script, Steve. And someone oh, yeah. says, there is now. <laughs> yeah. Or so, yeah, 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 that's right. But, but then in the end, I didn't get that helicopter. Ah. Oh. Oh. But, it was, but it was a compromise for something else that was much better, so it was okay. But yeah, that was that was that was interesting. That was yeah. interesting. Um, Did you do much changes to the script? Do you mould it into? Yeah, I I, I I get to I get to weigh in on on things. And uh, what's nice is that with the second film that we're working on now is that because I've proved myself with that you know lockdown movie, they you know your opinion is a lot you know is um, appreciated a little bit more and respected a little bit more because you've got credibility because you've done you know at least one decent movie so you know I'm allowed to have a little bit of well a lot of say in on what's you know good about the movie and things that I can maybe make better that I'm seeing from a visual sensibility okay back to questions <coughs> I've got two okay um, what other films have you actually done uh, obviously there was Vendetta uh, prior to Vendetta I did a short film called Snowman because um, prior to Vendetta they were all sort of short films um, I directed Snowman. Snowman is uh, uh, a vigilante movie, which is kind of quite similar in the premise of what Vendetta was about. Um, it's about uh, an albino, and um, he goes out there basically um, fighting injustice on the streets of the UK. Any actor we know? No, the, all of the short films I did were with, you know, people, uh, friends, or, or actors that weren't like stars as such. Um, was it like voiceover, or was it real? 
It's real. It's uh, surreal. Have, uh, Google it. Google Snowman Stephen Reynolds, and that film will pop up somewhere. I think it's on YouTube. I'll be sending the links out to Stephen's uh, Vimeo channel, which is, has his short films on there. So you can take, uh, so you can watch those back. Okay, Robbie. Oh, sorry, Scott. It was going to go. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. We'll, come we'll, we'll come back. back. We'll come back. back. Hold it. Yeah. My main influence is uh, my, my main influence is, uh, is a, a director that's passed away now um, called Tony Scott. Um, he was a director. Yeah, he um, he was my favourite director for. Uh, well, he still is my favourite director, um, and yeah, that's him. It's very sad. Yeah, as to what happened with Tony, and uh, and you were. I mean, Steve's always worn a cap, but like Tony Scott, you know, always. Um, yeah. Well, no, not yeah. really. It's just to hold my boldness. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, He's Scotty. Proud of it. Yeah. Right. So, and then back to Scotty. What's What's Danny Dyer like working with? with it? He's uh, Danny Dyer. He, uh, <laughs> uh, Danny Dyer is is actually the funniest uh, person I've ever met in my life. He's uh, he's a, he's a very nice guy to be around. Um, he he's uh, he's got great manners. He's got a great way about him. Oh, I, would, I would never see that. No, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't. I think um, I think Danny's probably one of the most uh, misunderstood actors slash celebrities in the industry. I think people have got a very skew if uh, view of wh who he is and what he's about. But you spend five minutes in the company of that man. He's one of the nicest guys you will uh, ever meet. Is he and than you? Oh, I love him. Hey, is he bigger than you? Literally? He is actually, actually taller than, than me. Tall. Yeah, he's a tall boy. Yeah, what a Danny. <laughs> right, what? Scotty, and then the Jordan, and then you guys at the back. Yeah. Um, um, going back to the the WWE side of it, as Theo said, I'm a massive wrestling yeah. fan. Wrestling. Wrestling. It's one time pronunciation. Um, um, oh. I understood you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> it's okay. Which WWE superstars? Have you liked working with and with WWE WWE superstars? Would you say I've done one film with, I don't want to work with them again. Well, that's alright. I got it. Yeah. Um, well, I've only worked with Dean Ambrose at the moment, um, and that's that's um, that's the only one I've worked with at the moment. I would work with Dean again in the blink of an eye. He was a, a true professional, um, and there's uh, there's lots I would like to work with. Um, but uh, uh, at the moment, yeah, it's, it's only Dean that I've worked with, and, and working with the, 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 the guys, the company over there has been uh, has been great, and I you know look forward to the making making more with those guys and whatever wrestlers they throw my way. I uh, okay. can't wait to work with them. Yeah, Jordan, um, what what sort of feeling do you get when you're on set? Like what what makes you what makes you driven to what, driven what for what you do? What what makes you do it? Good question. Very good. Um, uh, firstly, the feeling I get on set is is a complete mixture. I get very excited. Uh, I get very nervous. Um, I get very fearful. I get lots of adrenaline. Um, I get very impatient. Um, I probably go through in a 12-hour day. You know the ratio of feelings that most people maybe get in a year. Um, so I get a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of weird uh, feelings. It's it's great. Uh, what keeps me driven is that I've just always wanted to do it. Um, when I was 15 years old, I, I wrote a, a, a little mountain of books and um, stories, and um, you know I kind of want to honour that that guy, that kid that was doing that because I have this very wild imagination, and I'm always making movies in my head, and um, it's just always been a dream. It's hard to explain it, but once you have that that dream, that vision, that thing that you really want to do with your life, you kind of just Keep going until uh, until you get there. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, Sam. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. You've talked about a lot of films. Well, the films that you've done. But I think it would be great if we could talk about like a like a film that you'd want to do. So my question mm. to you is, if there was any franchise or anything that you loved as a child or something that you could kind of make a film of, what would it be? I mean, for example, Michael Bay did Transformers. Yes, okay, it wasn't great. Transformers Taste. What would you do? What, 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 what childhood franchise or thing that you love would you bring to life on the screen if you have a chance? Airwolf. Yes. Airwolf. Um, it will be before a lot of your time. Anything that hasn't hence, been done. hence, hence, why if I reboot it, 
fresh audience. Yeah. So in five to ten years, I will oh, reboot. Okay. I will reboot Airwolf. Uh, have a look at it on Google. Uh, Google it. Airwolf. Uh, TV series like Knight Rider. Has everyone, everyone heard of Knight yes. Rider? Yeah. It's like that, yeah. but a helicopter. I've seen, I've seen Knight Rider. It's a helicopter. Oh, yeah. That is to do with the car, car, isn't it? Knight Riders to do Knight with the car. To do yeah. with the car. David has Airwolf to do with yeah, the right. helicopter. Does the helicopter talk? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to try and get it? Do you want me to make it talk? No, you no, 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 Okay. You can do it how you want, oh, mate. Oh, okay. we got Mella. Sorry. We got... Oh. Who would, you, who would you cast in it, then? Me, me. No. Oli, there you go. No, We're going to have a helicopter full of these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It will make sure it hop wouldn't take like your parachute. Oh, I know yeah. I'm going to be reading in the I have no way. idea. I, I have a complete weird fetish to want to work with Tom Hardy. Um, so I'll probably put Tom Hardy in it. Maybe Chris Hemsworth. Maybe Chris Evans. Not the, not the ginger one with the glasses. I don't know. These are lots of Jake Gyllenhaal. I don't know. These are all leading men that I'd like to work with one day. Good They're questions, great, great guys. guys. Uh, yeah. Um, in 1985, I watched a film called Back to the Future, and I wanted to be. What a film! What a film! I wanted to be Marty McFly. Yeah, yeah, tried to do that, and um, you know, you know what, you know what? When I was uh, when when I was younger, initially it was acting. Uh, I was really into acting. I was a bit of a performer in primary school, and not so much secondary school. Um, but then. My imagination started to take over a little bit, and I could see the movies more than want to be in them. Um, and then I basically picked up a camera in uh, my late teens, and then started to just film things and edit them together. And that kind of uh, took hold, really. And the words that I were writing then manifested and became pictures and vision, and then that became, you know, film. And then I just enjoyed it massively. I just wanted to keep going. I thought, you know, I think I could make a career out of this. This could be quite good. Just kept going. And then, yeah, okay, brilliant. Um, Ended up here. Uh, yeah. Hi. As a director, um, yeah. when you're making these films, um, do you have a sort of a vision of like, who will be portraying each role in your mind, or would you just um, get a casting director to work with you and you're like, yes, this is this is the person for my film? It's a great question. That's a very good question. Um, when. For something like lockdown, you you can't you don't do that because you know who's going to play that role almost straight away, so you don't get into that. But when I'm sat writing my own uh, scripts at home, um, when you're when I'm writing anyway, I don't know if this is for for everybody. I will shoot the film in my head kind of while I'm writing, so it's good to have a, a template person and um, playing that role so you can see them. So yeah, you you will pick, and it's always good for when you're pitching a movie as well. So if I pitch a movie to someone and I go, this is the film, blah, 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 blah. One of the first questions a producer will ask is, who do you see for the lead? Who do you see as the girl? Who do you see? So you can start to help paint a picture of faces in their head. So yeah, it's, uh, that's a great question. Yeah. Okay, uh, that one, and uh, then Jordan, then Chris, and then Josh. Yeah. Yeah. What is, what's the difference between shooting with a UK crew and a US crew? <gasps> Definitely. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my word. I have a guess, and here we go. Yeah. I have a guess, and that's intelligent. Do you know what? Um, when, when you're when you're shooting over there, because it's more of an industry over there, you end up getting people who have way more experience. Um, and some of those productions will be like a factory; they're churning them out all the time. So you get this um, massive amount of experience over there. Um, not to say that, that that's, that's not over here, it depends on what level you're doing a movie over here. For example, you know, you shoot a Bond movie over here, then you're going to have guys who are top of their game. You shoot something for maybe 100, 200 grand over here, you're going to get what you pay for. Essentially, wherever you go, you'll get what you pay for. You know, so, you know, you're shooting, you know, the Avengers or something. Everybody at that level is going to be top end. There is nobody who's going to let the side down. If you haven't got that money to spend on it, you'll get guys who are good, but then there may be key you know, heads of staff that aren't that great. Um, but I've never had that problem. I had a great crew with Vendetta, but I, I, you know, I had an amazing crew with, uh, with, with Lockdown. But because we had a little bit more money to spend, you'll see that change as well. Um, so, so that's one of the main reasons that there was certainly a difference. So just give us a, a quick example. Um, we're in, you're, you're in the, you're shooting lockdown, you're on set, you're on uh, 
you've got a media, it's called a media village, where the director, you might have seen it, the director sits behind a row of screens. Is that, is that what happens? Yeah, you get video, video village video and village. you get like a little truck and it's got your screens on it and then that just moves everywhere. You've got about five seats so that the director can sit there, the studio execs sit there and you know the film will be happening over there and then you sit and shout action and run onto the set and tell them what to do and then you get back to yeah. video village yeah and you have your own uh, trailer in the I have circus. my own trailer yeah, yeah the yeah. circus yeah so you got the circus then which is where all the storage stuff is all of the trucks wardrobe makeup the catering truck and props. Um, props all of that so they'll have all of those trucks um, and then, yeah, there's my trailer, producer's trailer, the star's trailer, and all of the key staff, which is what I, key, um, key actors, um, even some of the secondary cast would, would get trailers on a, on a shoot like that, which was, uh, which is great because they're sitting around on set for a lot of time sometimes. Yeah. Not on my shoots, but on usual films, you'll be sitting around for a long time. So it's nice to be in a trailer, especially in the cold. Brilliant. You okay. know, yeah, your own space. Yeah, Jordan and then Chris. Yeah. Um, I, um, I I enjoy filming and I'd like to get I'd like to get noticed as a filmmaker. How do you do it? How do you get noticed? Um, keep keep making movies. Just live it. I live it. I don't I don't do anything else other than make movies. I, I eat, walk my dog, and kiss my wife. But that's about it, really. You know, everything else is uh, is is I, I live it. So um, just keep making projects. Know what your project's gonna be after your next one, but make sure it's a little bit more ambitious. So if you're making movies that are at the same level all the way through, you're never going to really grow as a filmmaker and other people aren't going to see your work grow. So just try and make each project a little bit more ambitious every time and you'll see growth and eventually you'll get bigger and bigger and bigger and people will start to see your, see your, uh, your movies. Yeah. Chris. Good Hi, question. me again. Hello. <laughs> all, all directors have a, a particular kind of trademark. Uh, Christopher Nolan works on a massive scale and is quite a dark, director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael Bay likes explosions. JJ Abrams. JJ Abrams does lens flares. What would be your trademark? Or what, is, slow motion. or what is your trademark? Yeah, um, interesting. I, I don't know. What, I don't. Or Crash zooms. Crash zooms. Or, <laughs> or haven't you found it? Um, I mean, you've you got to watch uh, Stephen's work mm. and then you decide what his trademark is. Silhouettes, crash zooms, soldiers running through smoke. Um, There's a bit of and hot women. Of, yeah, hot women. Yeah, actual, yeah, um, characters um, who've been uh, very deep characters. Yeah, yeah, characters who've been taken to the lowest point of their life, and then they've got to rise up at the end. We do that in lockdown. Yeah, we do that in Vendetta. So. Yeah, so, Alan, there's always a SWAT team. Yeah, always, there's got to be SWAT teams. There's always or, a SWAT team at the bursting end. Bursting down the hall, blowing things up, yeah. bursting in. Um, Silhouettes, yeah. SWAT team, crash zooms, hot women. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. That sounds pretty Michael Bay. Lots of guns. <laughs> Lots of guns. <laughs> Michael Bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, tell them about uh, sending the script to Michael Bay all the years ago. No, oh, man, he's remembering oh. stuff that I forgot. <laughs> Um, to be fair, do you know what? I had a massive amount of um, respect for Michael Bay. Uh, anyone seen Bad Boys? Yeah. Bad Boys was Michael Bay's first film that he ever directed and is still standing one of the best buddy-buddy cop movies, action movies of all time in my view. Um, and then he made The Rock, which was good, and then he made Armageddon, and then he, I think he made Pearl Harbor and it all went wrong. But, you know, if you watch... If you watch Michael Bay's movies, you know, there's a reason why everybody pretty much in this room knows who Michael Bay is. That's pretty weird. And that's a director, you know. So there's a reason why he's got that, you know, he's got that 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 edge is because that he brings a visual a visual flair to his images, to his films that not really any other director does. Fair enough, they are corrupted in crap CG and there is, you know, some stuff and I think Hollywood have just let him go a little bit, but if you watch a film called Pain and Gain, which is um, his passion project that he made, um, which was for half the budget of what Transformers is, when he's got a tiny bit of money to play with compared to what he usually has, he's pretty good, and he's one of the best visionaries in Hollywood. The only problem is, is that he's making those movies so huge, and he's answerable to no one, so he can do what he wants. So that, you know, it, it's there and thereabouts. Um, but I, I sent a script... My wife had found out that Michael Bay was selling his house. Um, <laughs> and we found wow. out the address. Wow. Yeah, and so um, he, sold it, he sold it for 11.4 million. And um, I thought I'll send one of my larger screenplays to his house 
on a whim. Uh, heard nothing back, but it's uh, it's, a story. it's cool. I know he hangs out. I know he hangs out to have uh, coffee now. So when I'm in LA next week, I'll cool. Leo. Stalking. Theo. Theo. I keep getting Theo's name. Sorry. Even though I'm Theo. Would you ever do? Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Would you ever do an animated film? Absolutely. What like? I would. I would do the BFG. Thank you. That's a As a computer-generated animation movie set at Christmas, I've written the first 20 pages. Oh wow! I don't think I don't know if Roald Dahl's and uh, um, what's it the would word? Estate. Be no, I think I think he'd like it. I I wouldn't do I wouldn't do Michael Bay on it. Like you know, Ninja Turtles. I would uh, oh, I would I uh, I I'd honour it. I'd honour it. Um, I, I I would honour it. But uh, yeah, I've got about yeah. Yeah, and I'm also a massive fan of, uh, you know, uh, anime and, um, you know, films like Akira and Ghost in the Shell and things like that. I'd love to do something that was kind of a Tokyo-based, futuristic sci-fi. The Twits. The Twits? Okay, I'll get off to Google that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm thinking anime Twits, sorry. Yeah. What was your second question? You forgot. We'll come back to you. We'll come back to you. Robbie's been waiting loads. And then, um, Robbie. Robbie, yeah, go for it. Uh, what's, your main, main goal? what's your main goal to do when, when you've made loads of films and money? My main goal? Yes. Um, well, I'll, I will Thank never stop much. making movies. I'll always be making movies yes. until the day I die. Um, so the, the, the main goal is to just keep making movies. I don't necessarily want them to be bigger. I don't want to make, I, you know, I don't want to be the highest paid direct out in the world I don't want to be the you know the or, or make the biggest movie or have the biggest grossing I don't I'm, I'm not it's not that I don't want one um, I if someone wanted to give me an Oscar for one of my movies but it's it's not yeah I mean an, uh, an Oscar probably an MTV movie award would probably be more my kind of thing at the moment but things change you know I make different films now than what I did sort of 10 years ago and in 10 years, maybe I'll make movies that are slightly different. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to see how it goes, really. And, and as long as I'm telling stories that I get excited about, it doesn't matter the size of them, I'll, I'll always, uh, I'll always I'm gonna know, go be Jay. making gonna, Jay hasn't had a question. movies. Hi, Jay. I've seen some of your early stuff. Could you just show, show us the, like, your military style of things? Do you know okay. Cool. And how I've seen one where um, it was like an abandoned warehouse and, and you were telling all the soldiers to spread out and that kind of stuff. Sure. Would you, would you do that kind of the theme again? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you specifically? Do you mean because that was kind of a, this weird sci-fi post-apocalyptic uh, thing, or do you just mean the whole military action thing? Just the more military action kind of thing. Absolutely. I, absolutely. Yeah. Sort of the smoke and all the things you talk about. And yeah. The things you love to do. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there's not really a massive. Um, um, there's not really a lot of British military movies, um, uh, contemporary ones at, at, at the moment. And um, I've, I've been looking at a few bits and bobs that I can't really talk about um, that, that could possibly um, change that so that, that, you know, potentially that might happen in the future. I would continue to certainly do that because it's, an, uh, you know, I like soldiers. I used to play with G.I. Joe when I was a kid and they were kind of my soldiers. Yeah, I, I used to play with Plastic Army with myself. So you know. Yeah, yeah. I am uh, was a big fan of G.I. Joe. I've still got a, a, a six-inch uh, Snake Eyes uh, uh, toy at home. And oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they were my soldiers when I was young and now I've got life-size soldiers with my Sterling Airsoft guys that I get to, uh, right, yeah. get to uh, run around with. So, no, absolutely. There'll be, there'll be more of that. Okay. Um, Alex. Um, right. If you were given the opportunity... Um, was that making a, during, during making a film, would you rather focus on trying to keep it real, or would you try to incorporate more CGI than what would normally be considered regular, I guess? Um, I'd, I'd keep it as authentic as possible. I don't like. I watched. Um, I watched a remake of uh, the remake of Carrie last night, and I was actually um, massively happy that there's a baby at the beginning of it, and the baby wasn't CG. Um, I get massively frustrated at over computer generated images <coughs> in cinema. I think we as an audience and our eyes are you know, silly enough to know the difference between what's real and what's CG. I think CG's lazy. Uh, I think bad CG is annoying. And I feel um, 
like robbed as an audience goer um, when I see bad CG that just when you look at it you go I know that's not real I know that's some you know or, or 30 people yeah 30 people around a computer that's done that what's wrong with the authenticity of actually doing it you know on, on the big screen so where authenticity where you can do it you know I'd, I'd push the boundaries for that where I can yeah Okay, Hi. Yeah, behind Hi. Theo. So we're going to go. We're, we're coming, people, Theo. People who haven't had we're a coming. question can get priority. You'll Most get that. You'll get that. Questions before, then you will get answered in a bit. But can we let people who haven't asked a question? They'll fill out some third way. Sorry, say that again. Why or? Absolutely, you've got to be open to everything, really. Um, the script will always dictate how I'll shoot something. So, you know, on, on, on reading the script, I'll, you know, try and pre vis the shots inside my head. And there's not exactly a certain type of way of shooting that I'm grounded to. If it warrants, you know, I'm not, I'm not a massive um, lover of kind of big crane movements and things like that, which do make films look a lot more expensive. And I haven't really done that on the last couple of movies. The one that I read the other day kind of warrants it, so there'll probably be a little bit more of that. Okay. So, yeah, you, the script dictates it. Okay, brilliant. Joseph. Okay, yeah. Um, just a question. Um, if you had the opportunity to... I know this has been done plenty of cinema, but if you had the opportunity to adapt like, a novel or a graphic novel or a comic book into a film, would you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Yeah.
if you could give one piece of advice to any future director in the whole world, what yeah. would it be? Keep making movies. Just keep making them. Just keep making them. I've been in places where I've been depressed. I've been getting rejections from, you know, it's taken me 16, you know, 17 years to try and break through. I've been through dark times. I've been broke. I've been claiming benefits. I've been in really, really dark places. Um, but I, I, I would always f find a way to try and keep making movies. You know, I had a guy email me today and he said, you know, I'm a writer, but I'm not very good. What would you give me? What, how can I develop? And I would say, and he wanted to be a director. I said, get a camera. I don't know any cameramen. I didn't know any cameramen. I learned how to work the camera myself. Then I, self, I was self-trained. And um, I learned, it, it was a skill that I then had. I was a cameraman. Great. That was a bonus because I didn't know any cameramen. I didn't know any directors. I didn't even know any actors. And the first film I did in 2002 called POV was me, my friend, a couple of friends working the camera when I was in shot. If I wasn't in shot, I'd work the camera. I directed it. I edited it. Keep making movies. Get a camera. Start shooting. You'll learn. Your first one might not be very good, but it'll be better than your, your second one will be better. Then your third one will be better than your second one. Then your fourth yeah, one will be better than your third. Trial. Just keep going. Great keep question. Going. You'll grow. You'll grow. Uh, eight years ago, was it? You were a forklift truck driver for Toys R Us. In yeah, less. Country. Yeah, about seven, seven, seven years, years ago. ago. Okay. Um, driving a forklift truck around a warehouse in absolute misery. Yeah. For minimum wage. Yeah. So Getting everyone, up at 5 a.m. every morning. Uh, Chris on the camera. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Jordan. Um, we've talked a lot about films that you want to do or you have done stuff like that but would you ever want to work on TV or would you like to ever uh, would you ever like to apply your skills to TV instead of film and if if so what do you want to do um, yeah if someone um, asked me to direct The Walking Dead I'd do TV <laughs> um, no I mean I think TV's grown in the last decade into something else now it's a different animal um, to what it was and it just feels like it's taken over you don't have to, you know, you could reel off five series in an eye blink, you know, like Breaking Bad and Walking Dead and House of Cards and blah, blah, blah. You know, the production values on TV now is unbelievable. Um, so, yeah, you know, if someone sent me a script and it was, you know, really good TV and I liked it, I mean, I, 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 I can't be bought. So anyone sends me something and, oh, there's this amount of money to it, I'll go, yeah, but send me the script first. I'll make my decisions on if the script is any good. And uh, if someone sent me some good TV, I'd be well into it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Um, Hi. On the last day of um, when you do production on on a movie, um, do you get inspired to start working directly on your next film, or do you just take some time out and uh, plan the next stages of it? Um, no, that's a great question. I um, I would like to when I finish lockdown. It was just two months of being in Vancouver, flying to Vancouver, flying down to LA, editing. Um, it wasn't hard work because I loved it. I was um, I was at, um, in the edit 24/7, um, and um, yeah, I was exhausted. But by the time I got on the plane to come home, and I just wanted to come home in October and sleep until Christmas. Um, but WWE had the next script for me to read on the plane home, and I was like, I don't even want to think about movies. I want to sleep and see my wife and see my dog and relax and go back to cold grey Britain for a bit. Um, but um, Usually, yeah, I, I need to relax a little bit, but I'm always switched on anyway. My mind doesn't let me relax, really. I get probably like a week or two, and then I'm back on to the next one. So, yeah, that's usually how it works. Uh, last couple of questions. So, uh, Alex, yeah? Um, if you were given the opportunity to... Uh, I guess it's similar to Chris's question, actually. But if you were given the opportunity to create a story-driven music video or something of the sort, would you apply yourself for it? Yeah, I'd love to. These are all great questions, by the way, guys. They're really good. Um, I yeah, I'd, I'd never done pop videos, and um, that's how you know. Going back to Mr. Bay, when I researched him a lot when I'd seen Bad Boys, so I'd never seen a movie like it, um, and that was how he got you know into it, and he you know learned all of those really nice visual skills that he's got was in commercials and and pop videos, and pop videos are a great way, I think, to explore. Um, your your visual capabilities, um, especially if you haven't got a kind of linear story to follow, you can just be dead creative and have a guy performing, and you're a girl performing to the camera and just really light it and put in some really lush visuals. If you've got a story to go with it, even better. Um, I think it's a great one. One of the best ones I've seen of recent 
Um, looking wise it's great story wise it's terrible I think it was Maroon 5 on a payphone or something you know that's a great little music video right there story wise if you really watch it absolutely horrendous visually lovely little pop video um, so yeah I'd love to do pop videos I'm, I'm, I'm actually itching I, I'm itching to do that next actually I'd love to do one okay. love to do one um, we'll, we'll uh, have one last question but then you'll have a little bit of time afterwards obviously uh, Steve, you, you can I'll, I'll, I'll hang about, about if you want to for a bit. If you want to come and sit down, yeah, yeah we can yeah. chat. And okay. Um, so after after we finish, you can don't smother Steve, don't smother him. All right. Okay. He is, he is <laughs> quite quite protective. He's quite vulnerable child. He's a vulnerable vulnerable child inside. So um, be careful. Right. Okay. One last question, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll cut there because he needs a bit of cut. I like it. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's okay. No, you are. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we? I still live in Coventry. Oh, Coventry. Do you want? Do you want my? Do you want, do you want my actual address? <laughs> do you want my phone number? I got. I'm ready. Yeah. Um, I still live in Cov. I still live in Coventry. And where did you go? What school did you go to? Like before Toll? Oh, I went to. Uh, I went to uh, Stoke Park Secondary School. Um, went there and um, yeah, and then sort of came to Tile Hill and South taught myself after that. But I'm still in Cov at the moment. I'm in no rush to really go anywhere. Um, cool. When when that Tambor's time, a beautiful place. yeah, so alright, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll, I'll get out. I'll get out when I uh, when when the time comes and you know when it yeah. So no 11.5 million uh, LA mansion yet. Not yet, not yet. And I'm, you know what? Yeah, I'm in no rush to sort of um, so have that. You know, some people. Oh, I want that. I want um, you know, if that comes, it comes, I suppose. Yeah. It'd be nice, but yeah, I'm happy where I am at the moment. One last question. Oh, God, just Is one. Okay. one. Go on, last one. If you had a chance, where, where else would you want to go? Like, would you go to Paraguay? Would you go anywhere? Like, do you, do you, Paraguay, Paraguay is a wow. random example. I quite like that. Where did that one come from? What do you mean, like, that's great, that's great. Yeah. Do, you yeah. mean, do you mean to go there and live, or where would I like to shoot a movie? Shoot a movie. I'd love to shoot a movie in Hong Kong or Shanghai. Never already done that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. But oh, so try. So you want me to try and think of a try and think of a place on the planet that there hasn't been a movie shot then? Is that what you're thinking? It's Paraguay. Okay. There you go. Paraguay. Right. Give him a round of applause. Thank you.